Bonjour, welcome to Absolute and Reciprocal for Precalculus of Math 11. Uh, today I'm taking a look at solving absolute value equations, which is section 8.2. You'll remember last class that we took a look at how to graph absolute value equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that information and uh, solve a few equations. Uh, we can solve absolute value equations by either, gra either graphing, so graphing is a big step, or by solving the equation algebraically. So we want to either graph or solve algebraically. I think we're going to start with graphing. Solve the absolute equation y equals absolute f of x graphically when f of x is a linear equation. So we're deal dealing with linear equations here. We have absolute 2x minus 4 equals 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that these are functions of y. y equals absolute 2x minus 4 and I'm going to graph y equals 2. Let me do those maybe in two different colors here for you. 2x minus 4 has a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 2. So let me just draw some dots here, rising 2, running 1. Certainly with absolute value we know that anything that's above the line stays above the line. And let's take a look at the stuff that's below the line, the function, we can graph that above. So that's kind of reflected above, that's the absolute value part. So there's y equals absolute 2x minus 4. y equals 2 is a horizontal line at 2. So what we see is we have solutions here at x equals 1 and there at x equals 3. Now, the original equation didn't contain any y's, so that's why our answers are not ordered pairs. They're just coordinate, or an x value, sorry, for the function. So when x is 1 and when x is 3. Now, it's probably worthwhile to check that into the equation. I'm not going to do that, though. Why don't you try and do this second example by graphing half x minus 1 and negative 3x minus 4. Maybe hit pause now and give that a crack. So half x minus 1. So we have a y-intercept to negative 1. Rises 1, runs 2 in the positive direction. Rises 1, runs 2 now in the negative direction because it's the absolute value. Try and get some straight lines here. A little bit crooked. And in green here, let's try negative 3x minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Rise 3, run 1. Rise 3, run 1. This is not an absolute value graph. This is just a line. So let's just draw a line. So we see, again, that there is a solution. One solution in this case of x equaling negative 2. So how about the equation graphically when it's a quadratic equation? Pretty well the same deal, not too much different here. We're going to try and graph y equals the absolute part, maybe the two sides of the equation. And in green, y equals negative 2x plus 5. So let's maybe take a look at the parabola first, which we take the absolute value of. Uh, we could graph this using... Uh, the factor method. I'm going to complete the square actually here. I think it uh, provides a little bit of a nicer graph. So recall back to previous chapters where we learned how to complete the square. Half the linear term is 1 squared is 1. So we're adding 1, subtracting 1. And all of this is still inside the absolute value sign. That doesn't change. But all those steps are kind of the same that we've dealt with for quite a while now. So we have y equals absolute 2, x minus 1 squared minus 2. So let's graph this parabola. We have uh, shifted to the right 1 and down 2, and it's expanded by 2, so out 1 up 2. 2 would be 8, out 2 up 8, and certainly the piece that's a 
above the axis becomes or remains positive. The piece here that, you know, very lightly I have it dotted here, which is below, that gets mirrored up to above the axis. Let's graph that negative 2x plus 4 here. Uh, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is where our um, y-intercept is. And from there we want a slope of negative 2, so rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1. And it's actually quite nice here that our graph passes directly through a couple of points on our parabola, or our absolute parabola. We can see that we have x solutions of negative 1, that would be that point right there. Positive 1, that's that point right there. And positive 2. So all those solutions should work. Again, you could check it. Uh, pretty straightforward um, to check it. Like, let's just try 1. If you plug in 1, you get 2x squared minus 4x. So basically, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Absolute value is positive 2. And when you plug that in on the right-hand side, that works as well. So that's solving graphically, where you're really just practicing your graphing skills. Where it gets a little bit more interesting is when we start talking about solving algebraically. And the problem with solving equations graphically is that unless the question is built carefully for you, you will run into inexact solutions. Now that didn't happen above because the questions I had built were very, very specific. And when that happens, when they're inexact, you have to do it algebraically to get a really good sense of what the answers are. So let's solve 2 absolute 3x minus 1 minus 10 equals 4x algebraically. So this is kind of like um, any old um, uh, equation where you're going to try and isolate stuff to the best of your abilities. And for our purposes, we're going to try and isolate for the absolute value. Because what happens when we isolate for the absolute value is we get to do this other little bit of work. So let's try this. Um, let me leave the 2 there. 3x minus 1. And we're going to add 10. And then 3x minus 1 dividing by 2 leaves me with 2x plus 5. So the problem that we run into, or the thing that we have to consider, is what happens with absolute value is that it does two different things when the value inside the absolute value is either positive or negative. When it's positive, it doesn't do anything. When it's negative, it forces it to become positive. So for all of these algebraic solutions, what we want to do is we want to figure out where is that swing point? Where does 3x minus 1 equals 0 so that slightly to one side it's positive values and slightly to the left it's negative values. So all you do is you take whatever's inside the absolute value and make it equal 0. And we get x equals 1 third. Important stuff happens at x equals 1 third. Let me just draw that maybe as a little bit of a number line here. Here's 1 third. There are values to the left of it and there are values to the right of it. What we want to do is we want to set up kind of an inequality between those two for those two regions because there's two sets of work that happen when we're in those different regions. For instance, when x is less than a third, something happens, and when x is pardon me, greater than a third, something else happens. Now, we can choose one of these to be equal, it doesn't matter which. I think I just put the equal sign underneath the positive side of one-third. And we have to do two different things. Now, when I am on the positive side of one-third, for instance, pick bigger numbers than one-third, 10. If I plug 10 into my equation, the 3x minus 1, it's positive. 3 times 10 is 30, minus 1 is 29. So this is the positive side, and this is the negative side. And that, I don't mean that in terms of to the right of your number is always positive and to the left is always negative. I mean test a point in that interval to see if it makes the absolute value positive or negative. The positive side equation is actually pretty straightforward. We are trying to solve absolute 3x minus 1 
equals 2x plus 5. What we said is during this interval, 3x minus 1 is definitely positive. So we don't have to do anything there. It's already positive. The absolute value won't do anything to the equation. We just basically drop the absolute value signs. What we end up doing is solving. Add 1 makes that 6. Subtract 2x, we get x. And x equals 6. Now it's imperative that we check versus the restriction. And what I mean by the restriction is we did work based on assuming that x was bigger than one third. We get an answer of x equals six. Is x equal six? Is x equal six bigger than one third? You bet. So that's going to be an okay answer. The tricky part happens when we're less than one third. So let's take a look at our equation again. Three x minus one absolute valued has to equal two x plus five. I can't just drop the absolute value sign because it needs to make it positive. But to make it positive, because currently it's negative, what we can do is multiply that binomial in this case by a negative sign. Because it was negative for sure, when we multiply it by a negative, it becomes positive. And that's the technique we're going to use. You're just going to slap a negative sign in front of the absolute value. Drop the absolute value, change it into brackets, and there we go. So negative 3x plus 1 equals 2x plus 5. Negative 3x equals 2x. Here we are subtracting 1 plus 4. Let's subtract 2x. So that's negative 5x equals 4. And we get x equals basically negative 4 fifths. And again, you need to check that against the restrictions. Because we do two different types of work based on if it should be positive or negative. So is x equals negative 4 fifths, is that smaller than 1 third? You bet. A little bit confusing, we can certainly talk about this in class. It really has to do with just finding the swing points when the absolute value is negative. So let's do that here. I've already isolated for the absolute value, or the question already gives that to us isolated that way. So we need to find out where does the stuff that's inside the absolute value, in this case 1 half, x plus 4 squared minus 2 equals 0. That's where it swings from positive to negative and so on. This is going to be a fairly straightforward algebraic type thing. Add 2 to both sides, multiply by that, or divide by half or multiply by 2, that would make it 4. When we take the square root, we end up with plus or minus 2. Remember square root have to tack in a plus or minus. And when we subtract 4, the negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, and the positive 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So we have two roots of negative 2 and negative 6. So again, let me sketch this maybe on a little bit of a number line. There's negative 6, there's negative 2. This was a parabola that was opening up. So we have three regions to the left of negative 6, in between negative 6 and negative 2, and to the right of negative 2. So we're going to do three cases here. x less than negative 6. In between negative 6 and negative 2. And usually I just put the equality signs on the uh, values that are um, in the middle. And we have greater than negative 2. If you'll notice from our parabola, the way I sketch this little parabola off to the side here, is that the negative case is in between. When it's between negative 6 and 2, our parabola is below. That's where we have to do different work. So x being less than negative 6, this work here for x being less than negative 6 is actually going to be the exact same as the work for x being greater than negative 2. Those are both positive values. So what we can do is let's just drop the absolute value sign. And solve. This is going to be the same work. Do, 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 same work. So we can just kind of translate, move that kind of uh, solution over to get an idea of what happens there. So let's take a look here. What can we do? Let's 
you know what? Let's multiply or let's isolate first. Let's maybe move that negative 2 here over to the other side by adding it. So now it's plus 4. You know what? I don't really like uh, fractions of dividing by 2. Let's just multiply everything by 2. We've seen we can do that algebraically. We'll end up with x plus 4 squared equals negative x plus 8. Uh, how are we going to solve this? It's a quadratic. We're going to have to FOIL that out. That FOILs out into x squared plus 8x plus 16 on the left-hand side, negative x plus 8 on the right. Grouping like terms, x squared plus 9x, subtracting 8 will give me plus 8 equals 0. This factors into x plus 8 and x plus 1 equaling 0 and we get values of negative 1 and negative, pardon me, negative 8. So we get answers of negative 1 and negative 8. Again, make sure you check it against your uh, interval. In this case, the interval is x has to be less than negative 6. So it's almost like the x equals negative 1 is an extraneous root for this case. And we get x equaling negative 8 should work out because that's the only one of the two answers which is less than negative 6. What do I mean by same work, same work is there's nothing different we would have done for the interval to the right of negative 2. So we, in essence, get answers of x equals negative 1 and negative 8 again. And in this case, the interval tells us it has to be bigger than negative 2. So we actually get that x equals negative 1 now as the answer on this interval. So, now we got <clears throat> pardon me, now we have to do the work in the middle here. Let me just make this column a little bit bigger. Same idea. All we're going to do is we're going to drop the negative, the absolute value signs by making it a negative in front. And that's okay because we've guaranteed that the function is below the x-axis in that case, in that spot. And by multiplying it by a negative sign, that forces it to become positive. So we have a negative half x plus 4 squared plus 2 now equals negative half x plus 2. So same idea, let's solve this. Let's uh, subtract uh, 2. First of all, we have negative half x. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. Great, the x's are gone. Let's multiply everything by, oh, let's say negative 2 in this case. Makes it a little bit easier. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is positive, so that's x plus 4 squared. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is again positive, and it's positive x. Foiling again, x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals x. Subtracting x, we get a quadratic of x squared, equals, x squared plus 7x plus 16 equals 0. Now, uh, that doesn't factor. We're going to have to use the quadratic equation here, unfortunately. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, 7 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, c, which is 16, over 2 times 1. If you work this out, you get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 2. And because we're trying to take here, the square root of negative 15, we get no solution from this. There's no way that you can take the absolute or the square root of a negative. So in the middle interval, that negative 6 to negative 2 value, no solutions. This is for sure a really long question and probably the hardest part about this unit. So what we looked at, solutions of basically negative 1, negative 8. This sends the notes for solving absolute value equations for pre-calculus math 11.